Yeah, I mean, my concern was when Steve Bannon's war room got deplatformed that us having had him on Red Scare would implicate us in some way. But thus far, we have haven't been faced any repercussions for it. Yeah, and, and I guess the Bannon thing uh, is part of what people are, are talking about. I listened to that one, too, uh, since... I think when that happened, there was there was a lot of talk uh, going around. I mean, you know, whatever. If if you're anybody who's on Twitter enough to not on Twitter enough to not know what I'm talking about, you're much better off. And you know, yeah, God. continue to <laughs> your life that way. Right? But uh, but if you are, you know, there was a lot of stuff going on about how uh, okay, this proves it, right? That this 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 you know their see? mask off moment, they're platforming a fascist, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which, uh, you know, platforming is also like a really weird word that's that's used in these these discussions that I think, like, it's one of these things that every once in a while, it's, it's good just as a check to think, okay, how would I explain what this even means to somebody who wasn't in this world, right? Like, mm -hmm. like, what platforming is supposed to be and why it's supposed to be bad, that, you know, you have somebody, you know, like, because it's almost as if, right? Because I even saw it like with the uh, the Zizek Peterson thing. I would saw like some people say, "Oh, you know, Slavoj Zizek is platforming." You know, Jordan Peterson. It's like <laughs> it's like one of the best selling authors <laughs> in the world. And yeah, with, by debating like, him in a public forum. Yeah, yeah. That the uh, that this Slovenian Marxist intellectual is 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 like you know giving him his big break. You know that uh, by. Mm -hmm. by Arguing with them, or similarly, that like Steve Bannon, who'd been a special advisor in the White House, uh, whatever his whatever his job was initially in the Trump administration, uh, and who's who's like you know not a household name, but I mean anybody who's a political junkie certainly knows who he is. Yeah. Um, that you know, I mean, whatever. I mean, there's lots of people listen to Red Scare, but I I, I don't think that was a uh, I don't think a lot of people were finding out who Steve Bannon was for the first time right. uh, by, by listening to uh, by listening to Red Scare. And, and, and if they were, I don't think they would have been radicalized by the conversation we had. Yeah, right. In particular, I mean, what I liked about that conversation uh, was that um, if you compare it to like, I remember around the same time I listened to, um, uh, you know, since whatever, I'm a strange nerd who will listen to stuff like this, <laughs> you know, uh, that there was, I think like a year before, uh, there was this monk debate. So the monk debates are this like this really high profile thing that happens uh, in uh, Toronto uh, between Steve Bannon and David Froome, who's like a never Trump Republican. Mm -hmm. uh, and in that debate, like all it was, right? If you haven't watched it, I'll save you the effort. All it was was um, was Bannon throwing a lot of vaguely populist rhetoric about at Froome about working class deplorables and Froome throwing a lot of rhetoric about ba at Bannon about, uh, you know, like Bannon being a fascist. That was, that was, that was the whole debate. Uh, I, I don't think there was ever actually any like specific like policy disagreements ever in, in the mm -hmm. debate, probably because they're both Republicans. So how much do they really disagree about? I don't know. But, exactly. uh, but then uh, on the Red Scare debate, you and Anna, uh, your co-host kept, um, uh, asking Bannon this like really specific question, which is, hey, you say that you're a populist. Why don't you support Medicare for all? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, I'm glad that we asked him that because he's sort of, I think I'm against deplatforming fascists because I think if you do give them a platform, then they ultimately kind of will discredit themselves or people should be free to draw their own conclusions from what they have to say, which in Bannon's case wasn't, you know, anything very compelling. Yeah, I think so. Because in his response to that question, uh, I mean, look, I listened to the whole thing and uh, it's, you know, I mean, I, I think I remember it pretty well, but I couldn't really tell you what his end of the day response. Yeah, I was. can't even remember what it would, what he said. Yeah, because it seemed like he said a few different things, and they didn't quite add up to an answer. And then he's like, "I'll oh, hear some more Republican friendly things we could do about health care." Yeah, but why not Medicare for all? It's like, yeah, I don't know, you know. And yeah. then he never really got to like, okay, here's the here's the bottom line reason that that I don't support it. Uh, and I think what that really showed is that at the end of the day, 
like Bannon, you know, he's a he's a Republican with better marketing, you know, like like he says he says deconstruct the regulatory state, and that sounds kind of radical, and depending on your position, maybe a little scary, and in a weird way, sort of like Foucault or something. But uh, in but I don't know that he actually means that much that other Republicans don't mean by like deregulation. Yeah, he's. I mean, he's similar to Jordan Peterson in that he's really into kind of like mythologizing and talking in these really grandiose kind of mythic metaphors. Uh, but ultimately he's pretty toothless. Like he doesn't actually stand for anything. He has his whole like fourth turning <laughs> philosophy and that's all very flimsy if you actually interrogate yeah. someone on it. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like it's, yeah, the whole fourth turning thing. It's like, it's like a little bit like there's like a certain kind of dweeby, extremely right wing person who's like Twitter avatar is like some like Greek statue or something, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> like, it's like the, uh, it's like the prose version of that, you know, that it's like that, that it sounds like really grandiose. It's like, Oh, this is a guy. He must really know a lot about, you know, history and this and that, but it's like, okay, so what does that mean? What's, what's the upshot of that? Yeah. It's like astrology basically at the end of the day. <laughs> Exactly, astrology.